Good morning guys! <laughs> um, today is Friday and it's time to do a vlog and this week I think I will start a series that I will do for probably about three videos on uh, how to produce doll photo stories. Um, I decided to do this because I get asked a lot often by many people about what to do or how to get started and uh, what they should do, you know, how to get started on the doll photo stories. Um, so <laughs> I thought I would share my experiences and what I've learned over the past eight years that I have been blogging Luke and Laura's story. Um, so I have my cheat sheet here of notes, <laughs> if you keep seeing me look down. <laughs> I had to type this all out because it was the only way for me to keep it all straight in my head. So, um, I don't have any formal education in art or writing. This is all just, you know, a creative process for me that I learned um, just through, you know, trial and error over the years. Um, so, I don't consider myself a exceptional writer. <laughs> uh, so, when you know, even when I first started... Um, the blog, it took me forever to sit there and try to think of dialogue between Luke and Laura. It did not come easily, and as my characters have developed more, it becomes easier. But um, when it first started, it was not easy. So my episodes on my blog were very short and simple. They were not very detailed, and my pictures were also the same. So if you go back on my blog, you can see how things have changed over the years for me because, you know, that's how you learn when you just keep going and you don't give up. So, um, before we get into all that, <laughs> don't forget to uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe so uh, you can get notified of the next few videos coming up in this series. So, hopefully you stick around for that. Okay, so I moved the fan a little farther away because it was way too loud, <laughs> but it's it's hot in here. Um, I've got a cooling towel on my back, so <laughs> it's bad. But uh, it's, I think it's going to be 100 degrees again today. So um, we're going to start off with building characters. Um, I think that's the most logical place to start when you're telling a story because you need characters to tell a story. And um, you need strong characters. You need to pull the audience in with those characters. and. I don't, for me, I only started with Luke and Laura. That was it. I think starting with a couple main characters is probably the best way to go because if you try to do too many at once, you're gonna overwhelm yourself and you might give up. And I think just going with one or two main characters that you really focus on developing their story and developing their characters will be um, a lot easier and it will help to draw your audience in to appreciate the certain characters so they want to continue seeing what they're up to. And then as you go on, adding more characters into that story to, you know, elaborate on it. So a lot of you know um, what started me off was Luke and Laura. Um, you know, getting the Captain Jack doll was the highlight of my adult doll collecting. <laughs> Uh, I just I just love that doll so much. He was very creatively made by Mattel and I think he's probably the best Ken doll that they have ever produced, ever. Um, Laura's just a basic um, uh, collector doll. She's nothing too special, but you know, they're both, um, they're both awesome compared to <laughs> I think what they make nowadays. But um, let's see here. Uh, So I'm gonna point on several different topics within the characters. Um, I think starting with names that you wanna choose is important. I think names are important because they're, a name will definitely draw someone in if they think this person's interesting or this doll. Um, then also figuring out what their main aspects of their personality will be because every person in life is gonna have stronger, you know, areas in their personality, you know, more outgoing, less outgoing, stuff like that. 
So, and then last for me, that helped me get a jump start on my characters was writing a small biography of what their character was about, like where they're from, uh, a little backstory on their life, and then where they're at now. So that helped me as a jumping off point to start Luke and Laura's story. So that is the three things we will hit on in building characters. Um, starting with names. Now, a lot of people don't name their dolls because they just collect them, and then a lot of people do. Um, I always name my dolls. Ever since I was a kid, I've always named my dolls. And storytelling was always important. So um, that's the way I've always done it. Um, if I'm stuck on choosing a name, I'll often go to Google to help me choose if I know what like ethnicity background or lo like where my doll is from. Sometimes I Google that to help me figure out what name would best th suit them. Uh, but for me, I really like to let the doll speak to me and have it in hand <laughs> before I name them. Um, I can't do that unless I really have them, you know, physically where I can redress them. If I'm really stuck, then I'll redress them, try to find their character like I did with Baz and Eva. I didn't know what I was going to do with Baz at first, and Eva as well, um, until I started dressing them, changing them up, and then I was like, okay, this is the style I want for them. And that's what helps me. Um, because I like to give my dolls, you know, diverse, different characters, and along with their fashion style, because typically fashion style and characteristics of your personality can sometimes go hand in hand, you know? and so. Um, that's important too that your doll dresses a certain way if it matches their personality so um, let's see what else now for Luke and Laura their names came kind of naturally to me I, I had Laura first I think like about six months before I got Luke and I named her Laura instantly because I felt she kind of looked like a Laura plus she kind of reminded me of someone I knew in real life that looked similar to that so I named her Laura because of that. So when I got Luke six months later, um, you know, the same thing. I didn't want to go the obvious route of Jack, Johnny, or Christopher, because uh, I did consider John Johnny right away, since he is a Johnny Depp doll. But I was like, mmm. <laughs> so, and I, I don't know, Luke just hit me, and I liked the sound of it, and I was like, mmm, he looks like a Luke. So, um, that's how it happened. And uh, people always think I named them after the popular General Hospital characters, but I did not. It just happened that way. So, and I never watched uh, General Hospital. I was a kid when that was popular. My mom watched it, but um, other than that, it was all coincidence. So that's, for me, it was pretty easy for them, but I've had other dolls that I've struggled with. And so, like Baz. Baz, I struggled with until I finally decided on Baz, which is short for Sebastian. Also for me, when naming my dolls, I decided to name quite a few of my main characters after um, musicians, uh, since, you know, my story kind of does revolve around a musician and music lover. I decided to incorporate that in that way. Um, <laughs> so that's what I did, you know. So. You know, if you're inspired by a certain thing, you can always do that too, so it's fun. Okay, so next up, I wanna talk about personalities. Uh, we kinda of touched on it already, but the personality is just key to having a strong character or a very believable character and making sure that your other characters are not the same. I mean, they could have similar qualities, but you want them to be, you know, have some uh, variations. Um, this is gonna help too when you go in to start writing dialogue because as I learned that after blogging for so long, you know, it's really good to have like a certain character maybe fly off the handle too quickly all the time. And then one's more calm. So you know how they're gonna to react to different situations in storyline, you know. Um, and some characters you might wanna try and help them develop these bad habits, you know, um, over the years. To where they're not so bad and you know some characters might screw up all the time um so having those personalities is really important and staying true to that character 
and sometimes even writing storyline that you don't want to write just to push the story farther is important too. Um, and some, sometimes it's not, but more, more so it will be important because you want to keep that reader engaged and be like, no, this can't be, this can't be it, you know? <laughs> so you want to keep them coming back to make sure that, you know, it, the story comes full circle. So, um, personalities are so important. You just do not want your characters just to be the same across the board. Because if you do, then you're not going to have that depth in your story. Um, so, for an example is like Luke and Peter. Um, they're very similar because they have a lot in common. But they're also different, you know, because like Peter is more of a hothead. He's, he's not patient. Um, he's a lot more cocky. <laughs> he's quite of, uh, uh, full of himself and he's just, you know, he likes to, um, he's just more aggressive. Um, not violent, like aggressive, like in, he's in violent. He's just more in your face. Um, and Luke he can be if pushed to it, but it takes him longer to get to that point. Um, he, I think Luke has learned to um, pull back his anger. Um, I think he's developed that over the years, especially now as being settled down and having kids. Uh, he's learned to rein that er anger in. Um, so, you know, that's a story arc for him. And, uh, He's, he's definitely confident like Peter, um, but, but Luke's confidence was more natural and I think Peter's has been developed because of um, circumstances, the way he grew up differently. And I plan to elaborate more on that with Peter because Peter has a lot of backstory that we still need to learn. <laughs> so um, I know people have been asking where Peter's at and he will be around, I promise, I promise. So. Um, that's about personalities. Um, you know, we could go on and on about personalities and different things like that, but I think starting with, you know, a couple main dolls, a small group is the way to go and focusing little by little on each because you want to really ground yourself in developing these characters and getting to know them. Because if you don't know them, then your audience is not going to um, feel a connection to them. And I think that is so important because you know, Luke and Laura, <laughs> they live here in my head. <laughs> and I think that's why they come across more genuine. And, you know, um, they really are ingrained in me as, you know, characters. Um, so, last thing, we'll be talking about a biography. When I first got inspired to really go with Luke and Laura's story um, and start the blog, uh, I had briefly typed up a biography. It was late after I had taken pictures of them together as the fresh brand new couple that they were. Um, and I was so inspired by those pictures that got my mind, you know, rolling. And I typed up some biography, biographies for them. And I have stuck with those since then. I did not veer off and try to change things because it, um, you want to stick to your story. You know, this is what you wrote and this is what my character is. So, you know, um, you don't, what's going on over there? <laughs> so I had to pause my recording and go take my 15 year old and her friends to the library because they had another, um, video game, uh, session going on over there. <laughs> so something to do that's keeping them cool and gets them out of the house for a little bit so anyways back to um, talking about biographies um, <clears throat> so like I said you know I just wrote a basic biography for Luke and Laura they were the very first ones I did they were right that's where I started was Luke and Laura um, I didn't have their family yet their close family nothing like that. It was just Luke and Laura right at the beginning. And uh, I have their bios here so you can hear what they sound like. They were pretty basic. 
Um, and in fact, I think this one here is a little bit more elaborate than the very original one I typed, which I don't have anymore. There's like a bug on me or something. Anyways, um, here is Luke's bio. Uh, Luke Allen Cooper, age 35, birthday June 14th, uh, hair a gorgeous brown, <laughs> eyes brown, height 6 feet. Um, occupation, he's the owner of Vintage Vinyl Records, hometown, born and raised in Seattle, Washington, currently New Orleans, Louisiana. His marital status is married to Laura Levine Cooper. Uh, children are Phoenix Ellis Cooper and Phineas Elias Cooper. Hobbies, listening to rock music, reading about rock music, playing rock music on his guitar, riding his motorcycle, tattoos, and of course spending time with Laura and their two boys. And then I have a small paragraph, just kind of a little synopsis of Luke, you know, his history and uh, all that. So I put, Luke is a survivor. He had a rough childhood. His mom was a loose cannon and often left Luke to deal with things on his very own at a very young age. Mom, Cindy, was young when she had him and her marriage to his dad didn't last very long. Luke's dad left when he was just a baby and never looked back. Growing up as a teenager in Seattle, Luke was in the heart of grunge and alternative music. Inspired by bands like Nirvana and Pearl Jam, music is what gave him the will to pursue a better life. As soon as he graduated high school, he worked his way into the music biz and in his early 20s worked prepping stages for musicians and bands all over. The first time he came to New Orleans, he knew this is where he wanted to settle down. So after his wild partying days were behind, were behind him and the time came to move on, he scraped together everything he had to open his business. About a year later, a mutual friend introduced him to Laura, and he has never regretted his decision to pack up and move to a new city. And then I also have doll specs. Luke is the Mattel pink label Captain Jack Sparrow Barbie. I have these bios on my um, my blog, and I uh, have one for pretty much every character. I probably need to update it again. Um, I'm not sure. But uh, I leave them there for people to read so they can get to know and it's also a great reference for me because sometimes I forget, especially if it's like a lesser main character and I forget, you know, what did I type about this person and I need to stick to that because if I don't then it's going to not look right. It's not going to flow with what I got going. So, and I don't like to go back and change things once I've already typed it and published it because that is like I've set in stone. And this is it, you know, um, no do-overs. <laughs> so, um, for Laura's bio, I put Laura Ophelia Levine. And then now she has a slash Cooper because she's married to Luke. Age 30, birthday January 6, hair auburn red, eyes green, height 5 foot 6. Occupation is former, former master chef at a local French restaurant, Ma Cherie. Laura is now a stay-at-home mom with her two boys. Hometown is born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana, and she currently resides in New Orleans. Uh, marital status, married to Luke, children, Phoenix Ellis Cooper and Phine Phineas Elias Cooper. Hobbies are cooking, shopping with her sister, reading a good book, spending time with her man and her family. So um, that's Laura's little breakdown there. And then the paragraph is Laura's passion is good food and fashion. She worked her way through culinary school, waiting tables by day and creating recipes by night. Daughter of Scott and Crystal Levine, as a child, she was always the helpful older sister. What she loved the most was to help her mom cook. Now as an adult, she has made a name for herself in the restaurant business and hopes to one day open her own cafe. She's a very passionate person and believes that delicious food is the fuel that feeds it. Meeting Luke was the icing on the cake for her. She has never regretted agreeing to their blind date. And then Doll Specs, <clears throat> sorry, Doll Specs for Laura is the Mattel Black Label Barbie Basics Model Number 4 Collection Number 2. So I have that also on my um, blog listed. 
so that gives you a breakdown of how I start a character pretty much um, especially at the beginning that's how I started um, sometimes I don't always know if a doll is gonna be a more um, like steady character in the stories but usually they're they're not because I try to keep things revolving around Luke and Laura because it's pretty much their lives and what's happening around them and that's how I try to keep the focus because if I try to jump around too many places then <laughs> I have to build way too many dioramas and I already have enough already and um, it just will jumble things up for me and, and I don't want to get confused because then if I get confused I'm gonna mess up so um, you can see that it's a basic outline of them and it helps me to reference when I need to what if I don't remember something that I typed so um, I think that wraps it up you know uh, like I said going back uh, just you know character building is so important to um, to having a really grounded story and uh, coupling that with a couple other things that we will touch on like photography and uh, dioramas because um, I think those three main aspects um, focusing on those over the years that I have done the blog has really helped me to just um, get better and better as I go along because you know I don't give up and I stay consistent as much as I can so um, that really helps me to grow and learn from my mistakes and work what works better for me and what doesn't um, so you know you never know until you try but <laughs> I'm really glad I didn't give up on it because I have enjoyed it and it's been a whole lot of fun even though it's been rough over the years sometimes uh, the dolls are always there for me to come back to and just jump back into that world and forget about everything else Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. And next week we will probably touch on dioramas. That could be a really elaborate one, but I think I'll try to keep it short and simple. I'll just give you a few tips about what I've learned about diorama building. And especially if you're going to stay consistent with um, storytelling, um, then you need a place to really work. And that's it's gonna be, you know, very important. So anyways, so next week we'll touch on dioramas and then the following week it will be photography and figuring out how to photo photograph the dolls so um, you get, you know, a more realistic uh, feel to the, the setting. Um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head here about what would I would say for it. Anyways, so that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, please comment and let me know what you think about it because uh, like I said, I've had so many people ask me about this subject, about starting a blog or starting a story and uh, I thought maybe, you know, I'll just share you, with you guys what I've learned and what I think has helped me be successful at it. So that's it for today and we'll see you all back next week. Bye.